One thing that I find really interesting and useful is to talk about and think about the soundscape of a video game. The kinds of sounds that are involved, um, how they're made, where they come from, and how they combine. Uh, so for example, whether the sounds are synthesized, whether they're recorded, whether there is music, whether the music uh, reacts to the gameplay or has something to say about the gameplay, or whether it just plays in the background. Um, voices, voice acting, the kinds of sound effects, the detail and quality of the sound effects. All of these things are really interesting to consider when we're looking at video game soundtracks. So I thought uh, in order to set up our assignment for this video game soundscapes unit, I thought that I would run down just a couple of uh, classic video games from various eras and just talk about them a little bit in terms of the kind of soundscapes that they produce and that, uh, that exemplify them. So the first example that I'd like to talk about actually is the classic arcade game Pong 1972, uh, the f one of the very first arcade games ever produced first one to certainly become popular. Um, and so you'll hear when I play this that Pong has a very, very, very simple soundscape. There are just two little digital sounds, um, one for when the ball hits a paddle or a wall, and then a kind of loud, louder buzzing sound when somebody scores a goal. Next, let's look at the classic Super Mario Brothers from 1985, the original Nintendo, um, one of the first really, really, really popular Nintendo games uh, and, a, and an iconic game today. So first of all, you'll hear there's no menu music at all. It's just silent until you start the game. Then you hear some very simple audio. As we'll talk about uh, later in the course, the original Nintendo basically had four sound tracks, three of them melodic. Uh, and then one sort of psh, psh, percussion track, um, a white noise track that they use to imitate percussion. So you'll hear sort of a melody and a harmony channel, a little bass line, and the percussion going along. And then uh, if you listen closely, you can hear that all of the sounds of Mario jumping or hitting blocks or things like that are actually created by the same two melodic channels. So sometimes the melody drops out or the harmony drops out. And it's also interesting to note that the sound effects are not very realistic. You know, they're just kind of bleeps and bloops. Um, they're iconic in the sense of being icons. They point to when you jump at something, when you hit something. Um, but they're not intended to be the actual sounds of footsteps, for example. Next, I'd like to talk about a much more recent game that's actually, you know, influenced by Mario in a lot of ways, but does a lot of creative things of its own. This is Braid from 2008, um, and as you'll see in this clip, Braid is a, is a kind of a puzzle platforming game, uh, but this is an example of a level from sort of early on in the game where the music actually kind of gives you a clue of what to do. The way this level works is that when the character walks from left to right, you know, forward, time moves forward. When they walk from right to left, time moves backwards. And what you'll hear is that the sort of classic lullaby tune that I'm sure you're all familiar with plays forward or in reverse. And I think that kind of gives you a clue to how the mechanics of the level work. So it's an instance where um, the gameplay is kind of influenced by the music or it relates, the music relates directly to what the player does. And in this case, even kind of gives you a clue as to what to do. Oh, my God. 
Next, let's look at a couple of action games. Uh, so number one, Doom. You'll hear there is menu music now, and uh, there's kind of a hard rock soundtrack, although it's very synthesized. Um, the guitars, drums, etc. Uh, are all MIDI based, so it has this particular early 90s sound to it. But it is a reference to sort of real musical genres outside of video games. Uh, you'll see that the world is starting to become fleshed out. This is 1993. Um, there are sound effects, there are monster roars, explosions, gunshots, things like that that are supposed to represent the real world, even if the technology is still kind of on its way there. Then let's take as a contrast uh, Half-Life 2 from 2006, uh, 13 years after Doom. Technology has gotten a lot better visually, obviously, but the sound has also gotten better. Um, Half-Life doesn't use music throughout, but when you do hear music, it's with live instruments. It's actually been recorded by people at sort of full quality. Um, sound effects are not only you know perhaps better and better produced, but they interact with the environment. You hear actual footsteps right now. Um, you hear, you'll hear in this clip, the sound can change uh, when you go inside. You suddenly hear it kind of echoing around the tunnels, or uh, if, if you're outside, you hear different kinds of sound qualities. Um, you also will hear voices, actual recorded voices, which just takes more space um, than a lot of early games like Doom were able to devote to sound and music. footsteps. Another really, really popular game, <clears throat> another really, really popular game to talk about is Fortnite. You know, it's huge right now. We talked about this in the course during the semester on campus, and one of the interesting things about Fortnite is there is no music during the game. Music is kind of used as a reward uh, when you celebrate a kill or when you win a match. Um, but it's interesting that in a really tense, fast-paced multiplayer game, you actually don't want music because you want to be able to focus on the other person's footsteps. You want to be able to hear what's going on around you, what's going on across the map, and really keep an ear out. Uh, to try to gain any advantage that you can. So you hear footsteps, you hear weather effects. There's absolutely no music because you want to be able to hear what's going on around you. And conversely, I suppose you want to be careful about the, the kinds of sound that you're making so that other people can't hear you. Finally, I just want to show a very different uh, kind of game, which is, this is the most recent FIFA game, FIFA 18. Um, and you'll see how, you know, not only have, you know, sports games throughout their history had a very different approach to sound. A lot of times they use popular music, like in their menus or sometimes in the background. Um, if you watch people streaming games on Twitch, you're much more likely to hear somebody listening to real world music while they play something like FIFA, whereas if they're playing an action game, they're going to be listening to the in-game soundtrack. Um, and finally, you'll see how the contemporary sports games really are imitating 
the broadcast aesthetics. You'll hear actual announcers, you'll see sort of TV graphics logo, you know, overlays that are supposed to imitate the experience of watching a soccer game on TV. You hear crowd sounds and things like that uh, that are designed to immerse you in this particular environment. Stadium hey, announcer. Well, we've got an interesting match up here. Ed Nazard against Romelu Lukaku. Well, Ed Nazard is such a lovely player to watch on the ball. He can beat his man in the blink of an eye with the pace that he's got as well. The crowd sings. Romelu That's a major part Lukaku. of soccer. He's a real powerhouse. Not many opponents will knock him off the ball. And once the game gets going, the Chelsea on the outside. At Speedway here no as music, well. but you have running when they commentary. It off, they really made it a very crowd noise. Stadium. That's right, you Martin. I remember playing ball. here, and you had to run half a mile to get to the fans behind the goal. It was, it was quite spaced out, but much. So hopefully, this has been an interesting and useful introduction to all the different kinds of soundscapes that uh, might characterize a video game. I shouldn't say all. There are actually a lot more possibilities. Um, so this video is designed to go along with the first chapter of the Tim Summers Understanding Video Game Music book. And it'll also be useful for you in this unit to consult the How to Listen to a Video Game page, which is an appendix from the Summers book. It's also in the sort of beginning of class toolbox. Um, and you'll want to consult that as you work through your own video game soundscape environment. So what I'd like to see from all of you is an example of some type of game can be any era, any genre, and I want you to analyze some of the sounds that are going on, what might make this game or this type of game unique or notable in its approach to sound and music.